So let me quickly review what we covered last Wednesday. So last Wednesday is when we started covering voltage. And because the introduction took so long, we didn't get very far with the voltage. Let me just write it down, write down what we covered as a reminder. And we will uh, uh, continue with the topics and wrap up um, voltage. And I have a set of examples I'd like to go over. And um, uh, well, let's hope we have enough time for all those examples. <laughs> so voltage. Or we also call this electric potential. And I told you guys the uh, initial that uh, I want, I'm not even going to write it down because really my goal in this class is to never to use it. But in case you see it in Giancoli, whenever you see electromotive force or EMF, replace it with the voltage. Because that's what it means. It doesn't mean anything else. Um, so voltage, it's a defined this way. So you, hmm, yeah, remembering why the introduction took so long. Um, let me not start out with the definition. So um, I'm going to start out with the connection between voltage and mechanics, the way we did it for electric field. So with the electric field, this is the actual definition. This is the defining equation for electric field. Uh, um, all, yeah, this is the defining equation. With the voltage, um, let me at least write this down. Um, so it's, I, I don't consider this to be the definition of voltage, but let me write it down. So you are looking at a relationship between potential energy um, over charge and uh, voltage. So if you have, um, let's say, uh, let's, so that it's not so abstract, let me imagine there's some charge distribution out in space somewhere. So you know this is generating some electric field, um, right? And um, in addition to creating elect, uh, pr uh, establishing electric field in the space around it, what this set of what this set of charges is doing is it's also produce, it's also generating voltage around the space. So just like with electric field, which was a property of space, voltage is also property of space. You pick a point, and I should be able to tell you what the voltage of that point is and what the electric field at that point is. So uh, this voltage is related to the electric potential energy this way. It's uh, amount of charge, whatever amount of charge you place here, times voltage at the point. Now, with the potential energy, you might remember one thing about potential energy, that uh, what's physically important is not the absolute value, but the difference of potential energy. Does it, people rem do people remember that? Like with the gravitational potential energy, I could define gravitational potential energy to be zero here. But like, that's kind of meaningless. Because if I move this over here and drop the ball from here, then potential energy can go negative, and all that matters is the difference in the potential energy. So now, to the extent that that's valid, you might say it's the change in potential energy that's related to the change in voltage as you go from, uh, let's say, point A to B. Point A to B. Um, there will be some situations where we really prefer to have a common reference point for measuring this difference. So in that case, it will be as if this delta symbol isn't there. But well, we'll go over that soon enough. So, so this is the one expression that I want you to keep in your mind. Um, in the sense that, uh, so voltage is a new quantity. Um, you heard about it first in class last Wednesday. Potential energy, uh, how many here feel comfortable with the idea of potential energy? Hopefully you do. You've been using it in physics for a, you use it in energy conservation. So this is a familiar quantity. And um, this is the expression that relates voltage, an unfamiliar quantity, to potential energy, a familiar quantity. So whenever you see voltage, think of it as having a relationship to electric potential energy. 
Now, that is uh, one of the reasons why this phrase is a little bit um, confusing from time to time. Because when you look at this here, is a voltage equal to potential energy? It's not, right? You have to multiply by a charge, right? Or you could say voltage is the potential energy per charge. Um, so, so this quantity is, uh, you know, it can be called electric potential. Then I think a lot of people often forget that electric potential is not electric potential energy. The last word energy makes a difference. So, so that's why I'm, I prefer to call this voltage so that it's people have less uh, opportunity to mix them up in your head. That potential energy is not the same thing as voltage. They are related, but they are not the same thing. Yeah. Now for the definition of electric potential, this is how I would uh, define it. Um, so you define voltage, electric potential, voltage, based on electric field. So let me write it down. Um, let's say, well, let me use this figure. Let's say I want to calculate the potential difference. Sorry, I, <laughs> I'm trying to say voltage difference. You are trying to calculate voltage difference from, let's say, point A to B. So you want to see, as you go from here to here, what is the change in the voltage? The way you find this change in voltage is through this definition. Change in voltage as you go from point A to B. Um, at a very basic conceptual level, this voltage is defined the same way um, potential energy is. So this is the thing that took a lot of time last Wednesday. You can watch the video if you want. Um, but the potential energy due to a conservative force is based on the work done by conservative force, or you know, uh, force times the displacement. So with the potential voltage change, it's going to be the def uh, defined a similar way. So voltage change is based on electric field times displacement. So this voltage change, as you go from point A to B, will be minus electric field times, um, times the displacement as you go from A to B. And this is the definition of voltage. This is how we define voltage. And for comparison, let me write this down. So I was saying it out loud, but I can't, at least I can't think and I have to see it written down. So uh, to compare, to the conservative forces that you have read about in physics 4A. We don't spend a lot of time in class, but if you read the book, it's there. The change in potential energy as you go from A to B is given by, or it, you could say it's defined as negative of the conservative force times the change of position A to B. So this is the work being done by a conservative force. And um, so it's negative of that work because when a conservative, when an energy gets stored into potential energy, like I throw this ball up and as this moves up here, um, I'm increasing potential energy. Gravity actually does negative work. So what makes a force conservative is that as it does negative work, you can sort of trust the conservative force to pay it back. Um, that you know, when you let go of this, then that all the work, negative work done now turns into positive work done, and kinetic energy increases again. So, um, so you know, I know we didn't spend a lot of time this, with this in physics 4A, but it is in the textbook. You can go back and read it. And what I want to highlight here is that these two definitions are parallel. How we define potential energy due to a conservative force is exactly the same way how we define voltage due to electric field. And you know, the implication being electric force is also conservative force. So this is the definition of voltage. And um, now let me throw in a, in a little bit of wrinkle. You can kind of see it here. You can imagine that electric field will change over this interval. So that's where you have to Remember to do the thing that we always do 
whenever we encounter a quantity that's changing. So here, I want the voltage change over the whole interval, but electric field is not going to be one value over the whole interval. I don't know what value to use, so what I'm going to decide to do is take this and break it up into tiny little pieces. So I'm talking about electric field at a single point, but instead of talking about the entire interval, I talk about a small interval, dx, here. And the idea is that when you take a small enough interval, you can treat electric field like a constant at that point, or over the small interval. Um, but you know, this is an infinitesimal interval. It's not the entire interval from A to B. So once you have this expression, you do have to now integrate. So you know, a lot of you are used to saying integrate when I ask this question. But that's the very last, uh, that's the very last step. The more important and the step that a lot of people miss is writing down what you are supposed to be integrating. So, um, so yeah, we'll be using this expression sometime today to uh, figure out volt formulas for voltage due to different charge um, distributions. Yeah. All right, I feel like this is as far as we got last time. 